Welcome to another recap of The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. We're on season 10, episode 13. There's no place like Rome. Okay, so we are jumping right in 30 minutes after the famous dinner where basically everyone jumped in to assassinate Denise. Not everyone, but several of the ladies, which is appropriate in Rome, a city that has seen many assassinations. So, uh, you know, Teddy, Lisa, uh, Kyle, Erica, they certainly had their knives out and they were just ready to go for it on the word of Brandy Glanville. Yeah. Okay. So 30 minutes after this famous dinner, the ladies are all back in the hotel and one group of them Erica, Lisa, Kyle, Teddy, and Sutton. Very disappointed in you, Sutton. You're on my naughty list. I wanted to say something else. My ish list for this. Um, I don't care how many presents you buy, everyone. Try being a true person and not spreading gossip and not jumping on the bandwagon with the popular girls because that's what it looks like you're doing. Okay. Um, well, they're sitting around talking about, oh my God, this is just so awful. I'm just so upset. Oh, my stomach is churning. Oh, I just, I wanted to cry. I, you know, shut up. Shut up. You ladies, and I'm talking to you, Kyle, and you, Rinna, you need to worry about your own marriages. Get your own houses in order. This whole thing is so messy and so ugly and it's absolutely ludicrous the way that you're just gonna take the word of one person and completely discount anything that Denise has to say. You know, look, I realize Denise gets a little nervous, maybe her words are a little shaky. Who wouldn't be? I'd be nervous too in that situation. And let's not forget the main thing. Even if this did happen, which I don't think it did, I don't think it did for a second. Even if it did happen, why is this your life's mission to uncover the truth? Because she needs to be a real person. She needs to be real with us. She needs to own it, in the words of Lisa Rinna. She should just own it. <sighs> you know what? You don't need to know every detail of every woman's sex life, even though lots of people want to volunteer it lately on The Real Housewives. You don't need to know every detail. So that should be between her and her husband. And you bitches can stay out. Meanwhile, in another room, Garcelle and Dorit, bless both of you, are concerned about Denise. They're sitting with her, they're talking with her, you know, consoling her a little bit. Garcelle and Dorit are not gonna take the word of Brandy Glanville. I can't say just Brandy. I always have to say Brandy Glanville because that's how I feel about her. So they are at least, you know, giving Denise uh, the benefit of the doubt. And also they are recognizing that, wow, how traumatic to just be assaulted with something like that at what you're expecting is just a lovely dinner. Um, just how ugly. Um, and again, Erica, She's right there. She's putting up with it. She was sitting at the table. She was looking at her like, I don't believe you. She was giving her that cold as ice, hard bitch face. Beautiful bitch face, but hard bitch face. And, you know, now Sutton is clearly jumping on the bandwagon. So anyway, um, all right. I am just so angry that these women would dare to act upset as if they are the ones who are somehow wounded by this. No, no. Okay, Kyle is gonna go on and on about how bad she feels, how upset she is. I just, you guys, I really, this is upsetting. I don't know what to do. I mean, this is really upsetting. I, I, I haven't been sleeping. My stomach hurts. Fake, 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 bitch. Now that we're on to the next morning, we need to talk about something very important. 
we show the ladies getting ready with their glam squads, without their glam squads. In particular, we see Dorit getting ready. And everything about her outfit that day is going to be absolutely sublime because she has just been bringing it. She's definitely the fashion goddess across all of Real Housewives this season. Someone said, oh, I don't even know why Dorit's on the show. The only thing that she brings is fashion. Hold on. That's a lot. <laughs> the fashion that she is bringing is amazing. I'm there for it. I don't think that's all she brings. I'm starting to like her more and more kind of as a person. But if all she brought was fashion at that level, that level, bless you. I'm there for her. I'm there for it. But Dorit, this is now a public service announcement. Okay. You are perhaps a little bit too young to remember being an adult, a young adult, living through a dark, dark age in the early 1990s that was characterized by a tool of Satan known as the scrunchie. This was a disgusting uh, fashion trend foisted upon unaware, innocent American women who were told that this was somehow okay to wear outside. Now, scrunchies are for tying your hair up when you wash your face, pulling your hair back when you need to, <laughs> How can I say, take care of your special loved one in a certain way. But even then, do we not have clamps? Do we not have other options? I remember a dark time when scrunchies spread across the land in all sizes, in all colors, in every pattern, and they were worn freely in the streets, and it was horrible. It was horrible, the horror, the horror. You can't imagine. And then, lo and behold, through the course of the 90s, scrunchies became something that you would only see perhaps in the Midwest or in a nice shopping mall in North Dakota. But they became anathema. They became taboo to the stylish woman because they're ugly because taking a big snake of fabric and scrunching it together over a piece of elastic, making this kind of horrible, monstrous blob of crinkled fabric and sticking it on your head, it's, it's such a no. Now, I noticed to my terror that when I was going through a catalog of a company, not catalog, but an online store of a company, called Kitsch that makes fabulous hair accessories like this one, which says Vibes. I have a lot of them. I have all different ones, including the, the clips that you, you know, kind of snap on. They make beautiful hair accessories, very elevated hair accessories. And lo and behold, what did I see a few weeks ago? A giant scrunchie. They were selling a giant black scrunchie my stomach turned, my heart started beating fast. And then I told myself, Maura, don't worry, don't worry, this could just be a fluke. It's a fluke, it's a one-off. And then I see Dorit with this giant scrunchie. <sighs> I don't know if I'm too late, Dorit, but take it off, burn it, never let us have to see it again, please. And women of America, I guarantee you that if you fall for this trend again, you may be wearing them for a year. And very shortly after that, you're going to want to burn them all because you're going to look at pictures of yourself in them and say, what was I doing? Why? All right. That impassioned public safety notice is now finished, but it's important. You know, the more you know, the more you know. All right. Oh, F you, Lisa, for calling Denise, like you're all concerned, saying, we need to talk. We need to talk, Denise, you know, because they're such good friends. <sighs> all right. Um, 
And so they make a plan to get together. And um, I'm hoping that maybe this would be a good opportunity for De Denise to rip the scrunchie off Dorit's head and strangle. No, I can't say that. I can't say violent things on this channel. <laughs> Never mind. I take that back. <laughs> I take that back, but let's just say that I wouldn't mind seeing Kyle, Teddy, and Lisa scrunchied. That's how disgusted I am by them. Okay, uh, and Kyle is still getting ready and whining and saying, why is, why is Dorit so mad at me? Why is Dorit mad at me? It doesn't make any sense. Well, Kyle, because she's not climbing on board your little hate train for Denise. Uh, she's not buying it and she's not buying you she has a brain okay all right so now we see uh, Lisa and Denise get together uh, in I believe Denise's room over a little coffee and Denise simply asks Lisa why didn't you warn me that this was coming you knew about it why didn't you tell me? Why didn't you text me or call me or something before that? You know, I know we, we didn't see each other face to face because I was late and I was coming from the airport, but you could have still had a message on my phone waiting for me. Hey, girlfriend, heads up. There's a horrible rumor going around that the ladies are talking about you and Brandy uh, Glanville. That would have been something that a real friend would have done. So this is proof positive, Denise, in case you needed it, that Lisa is a snake and she's not a real friend. She's not anyone's real friend. She is her own friend and her own promoter. She's her own momager. She's pond scum. Okay. Lisa says, well, it was Teddy's job to tell you. Teddy was the one that brought the news to us, so I felt like it was her job to tell you. Oh, you piece of ish. I mean, really? Come on. That's the saddest thing I've ever heard. And supposedly, this was a real friendship between Denise and Lisa. They spent a fair amount of time together. It wasn't like the imaginary, you know, Brandy and Denise friendship where they met a couple times and talked on the phone a couple times. This was a real friendship that went back a long time. <sighs> okay. Uh, okay, the thing is, the one thing that I want to say and the one thing that I wish had happened from the very beginning is that Denise had just said, look, this is nonsense. I'm not even gonna dignify this with a response. It did not happen. She's a liar. Um, I know the truth. So you ladies can think anything you want. The rest of the world can think anything they want. I know what happened. This did not happen. And uh, let's just leave it and enjoy the trip. That would have been the thing to do because Denise feels like she's, she still feels like she's in a way partially having to explain herself. And I don't wanna see that. I don't wanna see her lower herself to the, late, to the level. I don't wanna see her lower herself to the level of these witches of Eastwick plotting their spells over their cauldron. I don't wanna even see her play their game. All right, um, Denise denies everything vehemently, okay? Now, it, it is, uh, let's say it is odd that Denise doesn't remember whether when Brandy came up to record the podcast with her, Denise was filming, I think, in Northern California or the Northwest, and so Brandy called and was like, "I really want to, I really want to um, interview you for my podcast," and uh, you know, so getting a good celebrity for her podcast. So Denise was like, "Sure, you know, if you don't mind coming up, come on up, and you know, we can we can uh, record up here while I'm filming." So it sounds like she came, she came up, they recorded the podcast, and she spent the night, and for a second. Denise hesitates like she doesn't remember whether she spent the night. Okay, I can think of a lot of reasons why Denise would answer this way. Number one, you know what, when there's a lot of pressure on you and people are pushing you and pushing you and pushing you, sometimes when you haven't done anything wrong, you can still get nervous. I give you getting pulled over by the police. If I get pulled over by the police and I'm like, oh my God, what is it? I haven't, I'm not speeding, you know, I don't drink and drive. I still feel guilty. I still get nervous and feel guilty. Um, 
you know, if, uh, if I know that I haven't done anything wrong and my husband mentions something like, oh, did you charge, you know, such and such and such at, at this, you know, some big expenditure. And we have a thing in, in my marriage that if it's a large expenditure, we talk to each other. That goes for him, that goes for me. And when I say large, I mean like, you know, more than a few hundred dollars. You go to the other person and say, you know, I'd like to do this. And um, there's no there's no veto power. The other person's gonna say yes, unless it's ridiculous. I'm not talking about a car. <laughs> I'm not talking about a five carat emerald ring, but you know, just out of courtesy, let's say, we usually mention it, okay? But if he comes to me and says, you know, wow, there's like a $2,000 um, charge on what was this I will actually get nervous and I'll even stutter a little it's just kind of like I don't know it's like my nervous laughter that I laugh sometimes at inappropriate moments I would be terrible if I was ever you know uh, accused of a crime because I would get nervous and I'd be like <laughs> I don't know you know I'd be like Jody Arias in the uh, <laughs> in the little room being interrogated I would be horrible I'd be the worst because I do get nervous I think Denise was nervous. I think that she, her brain was kind of spinning through how to, well, how to spin this story. And I think that she knew perfectly well that, yeah, Brandy did end up staying over at her house. And Denise thought, oh, that looks bad, even though nothing happened. So I'm not going to mention that she stayed over. That's it. That's what I think happened. Um, and that goes for a couple other things where it sounds like she's kind of a little bit unsure. I think that she's nervous. I think that she's kind of an anxious person anyway, even though, yeah, she's a cool chick and she's tough. I think that she's anxious and how would you like to be set upon by this pack of she-wolves? Oh my God, Erica, Kyle, Lisa, I mean, Teddy, she's nothing. But those other three, they're tough. So anyway, I completely understand. I just wanted to bring that up in case anyone else caught it and thought, well, that sounds suspicious. Why doesn't she know if she stayed with her or not? She knows she spent the night there, but she also knows nothing happened. So she's like, I'm just not even gonna bring it up, which is stupid. If she is gonna talk, Denise, either, either shut your mouth or be very, very clear. Don't, don't lie, tell everything as, absolute 100% truth. Or again, go back to choice A, which is just shut your mouth and say, oh, I don't really feel like talking about it. It's not, it's not your business. You know, this is, it didn't happen. You can believe me or not. So anyway, all right. Um, I am embarrassed every single time the screen flashes Rome, comma, Italy. Oh God, how sad are we that you have to put Rome, Italy. Okay, oh, it's because there's Rome, Georgia. Mm. And there's probably Rome, Texas, or, and Rome, you know, Indiana. I don't know, there's probably other Romes, but everyone is constantly confusing Rome, Georgia with Rome, Italy. That's why they have to put Rome, Italy. Even the people that live in Rome, Italy constantly have to say, uh, you know, I'm, I'm in Rome, in Italy, just so that no one thinks they're in Rome, Georgia. It's one of those little things about American television shows that drive me crazy. <laughs> it drives me nuts. Anyway, okay. Um, Teddy is staying in for, uh, for the day because of the weight, the sheer mass of how boring she is. It weighs her down. Teddy just is constantly under the burden of this boring personality. And, you know, she just kind of slunches and slouches through life and occasionally gets up to go to the bathroom or get a glass of water. How can such a beautiful girl be so dumpy? She's beautiful. She's fit. She's dumpy. How is that even possible? How can you be beautiful and fit and dumpy at the same time? It's crazy. Just goes to show you beauty isn't just the aesthetics. Okay. All right, so Dorit and Kyle decide that they're gonna get together for a lunch because they're not getting along so well. And uh, I'm sure Kyle noticed that Dorit didn't jump on the, the Witches of Eastwick's bandwagon. 
um, refused to take her place around the uh, boiling cauldron of bat wings. And Dorit kind of is keeping to herself and saying, you know, no, I don't, I'm not believing Brandy right off the bat. So they meet together and um, they meet at a very famous restaurant in Piazza Navona named Tre Scalini. And Tre Scalini is, um, sure, you can go there and you can get lunch, you can get a drink, you can get coffee. It's one of those cafes that has everything. It's two stories. It's very, very famous. It's very touristy. But I have to say, the, the most amazing hot chocolate arguably, on the planet, is at Tre Scalini. Another one is there's a cafe on the Piazza San Marco in Venice called Florian. And they also have amazing hot chocolate. Let's talk briefly about Italian hot chocolate. It's as if someone took uh, a dark chocolate bar and melted it in a pan. And then they blend it in with a little more sugar and some uh, cream, you know, like heavy cream, the kind you pour in coffee that, that makes like little clouds because it's quite thick. And then you serve this in a little tiny cup and on top of it you put amazing homemade whipped cream. And it's like drinking a beautiful Belgian chocolate bar. And on a cold winter day, it's, it's dreamy. <sighs> anyway, won't be going to Italy anytime soon, but we'll get over this. We'll get through this. You know, there's a lot worse things than uh, not being able to travel. People are suffering a lot. Um, so Dorit tells Kyle, Kyle, I feel like Brandy is doing this for attention. Everything about it to me seems that Brandy is just looking to stir up trouble and to get her name back out there. And so Dorit is absolutely convinced that Denise is telling the truth. And Kyle, of course, has to say, but she doesn't lie. Brandy doesn't lie. Okay. Here's the thing, if someone is kind of a skeevy person, if someone is kind of a sketchy person who is known for doing inappropriate, really iffy things, whatever you wanna say, I don't like the word moral, but whatever you wanna say, ethically, morally, you know, socially, um, she's the queen of inappropriate, weird outbursts. <laughs> And I think that you can sometimes look in her eyes and see that there's something not quite right there. Brandy is a very broken person. I don't know how or why, but she is a very broken person. I hope it's not just Eddie Cipriani and Leanne Rhymes. Girl, get over that. <laughs> be like, if my guy left me for Leanne Rhymes, I'd be like, oh, okay, you have a completely different level of taste than I thought you did, so bye but pay my alimony and my child support. Okay, um, Kyle is so adamant about Denise not lying and one of the things that they bring up, I am not going to discuss the details, but um, there was a case which I will allow you to Google for yourself and it was where uh, Joanna Krupa, the model, who was briefly on the horrible Real Housewives of Miami. I mean, I'm from Miami, so I was excited when the show started, but that was such a pathetic representation of Miami. <laughs> it was the worst. Um, but Joanna Krupa, the beautiful Polish model, um, was uh, suing um, for defamation because um, I believe, well, I, again, I won't tell you the details of the people, but um, someone, uh, said something very offensive about her personally, something about her body that was really shocking that any woman would be horrified to have put out there in the public. And, you know, probably not even true, but anyway, that's not the point. So she sued for defamation, and one of the third parties that this person who told this offensive story 
to was Brandy. So they wanted Brandy to be a witness. They wanted her to come in and talk about what had happened. But uh, during the uh, kind of pretrial interview, trying to decide whether you know the the um, defense, Joanna's lawyers wanted to use her as a witness, she said, "You know what? The one thing I can't do is I can't lie. So if you put me on the stand, I'm going to tell the truth." Okay, so that one moment in time is being used by some of the ladies to say, "Oh, she would never. She would never lie. She would never lie." In that particular instance. She didn't feel like lying, but this was not something that would have made her look good. This was not something that would have made her more famous if she had joined in on this case and said what she had heard. It wouldn't have done anything for her career. It wouldn't have brought her any money. It was pointless. This, on the other hand, is bringing her another 15 minutes of fame. She has much more reason to do this. Economic, you know, her, her status as a D-list celebrity could be elevated slightly. So she has much more reason to do this because you always have to look when people do things like this. There's got to be something behind it. And uh, in this case, Brandy believes that she has something to gain. Okay, so Google that. Google Joanna Krupa lawsuit. Um, or don't because it's actually disgusting. Now that I told you that, you're all gonna Google it. So if you haven't heard of it already, it's been out there. It's been out there on the grapevine, as they say. Okay. Um, all right. Um, now we see Garcelle and Denise together, and I'm so glad that Garcelle is showing her showing her uh, lovely kind of stable personality, her grace, by continuing to be good friends with Denise and being on her side. Garcelle and Denise have known each other for a long time and they're actually quite close. And they've been quite close for years. So I'm really happy to see Garcelle there really standing up for her friend, as, as you know, as she should. So that's nice. Um, all right. Denise looks absolutely stunning in her confessional look. These are the looks I believe that the women are having their own hair and makeup. People are coming in their homes and doing their hair and makeup for these confessionals because I believe these are filmed during the pandemic, um, during quarantine. And I'm telling you, some of these ladies never look better. That goes for the Housewives of New York. Um, that goes for, definitely goes for, uh, in this case, Denise looks young and fresh and, and beautiful, and I love her confessional look. It's, it's very refreshing. Okay, um, now, Lisa, Denise, Erica, and Garcelle are given a kind of a fun day of driving Ferraris up to Castel Gandolfo, which used to be the summer palace of the popes. And they're going to go up there and they're going to do some wine tasting and then someone else is going to drive them back because they'll all be drunk, <laughs> presumably. So, okay. Um, meanwhile, Teddy, Teddy, Kyle and Sutton go to Dolce & Gabbana for private shopping in Rome because of course Sutton has to keep, you know, ratcheting up that, oh, I'm such a top shopper. They love me so much. They close the store for me, blah, blah, blah. Um, you know, Note, uh, neither, um, is it, um, well, Dolce and Gabbana, one of them is Stefano and one of them is Domenico. No, they don't actually show up on the show. I mean, if she, <laughs> this is really catty. If she were really their number one shopper, they would actually show up and greet her. But we don't actually get to see them. I mean, so, you know, there's a certain list of people that are good shoppers that are going to be given private hours. And here's a little clue. If you're on a television show, yeah, they're going to give you private shopping, even if she's not that great of a customer. Because, you know, it's, again, it's promotion. You can say, oh, well, Dolce & Gabbana, they don't really need the promotion. Honey, everyone wants the promotion. Everyone wants a show where millions of people are going to watch and see your beautiful merchandise. Uh, yeah, of course. All right, um, I just had to make that bitchy little comment that we don't actually see Dolce & Gabbana. Um, okay, and Dorit makes a cute comment. She says, I, I think Sutton is trying to buy friends. You know, she gives everyone those $2,000 purses. Um, she gives them, um, she has these cute little um, rain boots made with everyone's initials on them and little black rhinestones. and. And Dorit says, you know, I, I feel like maybe she's trying to buy friends, but basically words to the effect of, but it's nice having friends in high places, <laughs> which I agree. <laughs> I totally understand. Okay. Um, they're 
happens to be three tiaras on display in the store and so uh, Teddy, Kyle and Sutton put on the tiaras and of course Dorit looks regal. She looks majestic in hers and Teddy looks like Teddy in a tiara <laughs> and Kyle looks like Kyle in a tiara with her crappy Kyle and Chihita clothes on <laughs> but Dorit looks like an angel. She looks like a goddess. I, I'm prejudiced. What can I say? All right. Um, okay. They, uh, they are at the, the other ladies are at the wine tasting and um, Aaron is brought up. Ladies, her husband's a little weird and he mansplains and he's a little bit of uh, thinks he's an alpha dog just let let it go just let it go just just don't talk to him just kind of be like hi how you doing give him a hug but don't be buddies with him um denise loves him for whatever reason you know and so just don't anyway but they bring up oh that you know how they didn't really didn't like the way that he treated them and the way that he spoke to them especially erica erica's so offended like this erica you are so strong and so rich why do you care why on earth do you care what aaron has to say to you come on I mean I hate this expression but it's true you can buy and sell them a thousand times what forget it just forget it you and Denise are apparently not going to be close friends anyway because you're jumping on the witch bandwagon against her so the whole thing is really annoying to me um, and Denise actually apologizes on his behalf and this concerns me because I feel like these women are sharks and any weakness that Denise shows is blood in the water and they're just gonna come take another bite and take another bite and take another bite and they're gonna beat her down and beat her down and beat her down and that's what I'm afraid is gonna happen because she's not being strong enough to them. Um, so she apologizes on behalf of Aaron and then you know she says, well, but he needs to talk to you himself and I guess she's saying that maybe he'll apologize. He's not gonna apologize. I, no, have you seen him? No, he's not gonna apologize. Um, no, especially not to Erica. Um, okay, going around the table for everyone's uh, looks, this is quite something, this dinner. Okay, we're gonna start with the problems. Okay, Sutton looks like she has been run over by a Vespa in the street out in front of the hotel. Her hair is kind of spiky, not in a good way. And she's wearing this very frayed looking lacy blouse, which I'm sure was very expensive. But you know, Sutton is the queen of taking something that costs thousands of dollars and making it look like you found it for $5 in the Goodwill. So yeah, her look is, it's not, no, 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 no. Kyle looks boring AF, just dull, just, you know nothing nothing special in fact I I would have to I had to write down a couple words to remind me that it was this kind of boring black dress with a little bow at the neck otherwise I would have forgotten totally forgettable okay can you tell who I'm can you tell who I'm gonna talk about next when I go oh, Dorit Dorit looks amazing she keeps everyone waiting 40 minutes you don't worry about it, Dorit. It was worth it. It was worth those 40 minutes. Those ladies can wait because she looks like Linda Evangelista when she had uh, blonde hair in the early 90s. Oh my God. She's got, um, you know, there's kind of like 1950s Marilyn Monroe big hair, the big blonde hair. And then there's the early 1990s kind of big hair, which came back in that kind of look, uh, which was very, um, very supermodel. You know, that, that whole period, the period of the Glamazons, um, Naomi Campbell and Linda Evangelista and Christy Turlington and all those gorgeous models. So, you know, they would have like the, the black cat eyes and the big hair and she's got this beautiful blonde hair and her makeup is impeccable. Um, and she's just, you know, fabulous head to toe. Absolutely fabulous. Everything, everything is on point. Everything is on point. Um, I, you know, just slow claps to her, her personal shoppers, her glam squad. I honestly believe it's a collaboration and she does have a part in it. She seems pretty strong, has very strong ideas about fashion. So I think she's part of it. All right, Denise is in a dress. 
all right that's different it's not a very good it's not a very cute dress it's kind of a meh dress but you know she's got a cute figure it's a stretchy kind of long uh, below the knee dress and, and I mean you know she's Denise always looks cute um, but everyone's shocked to see her in a dress so you know it's not exactly a, a dress that's gonna oh my god you know shake the world but okay she looks cute um, Erica is also doing big blonde glam but she's going more for the 50s more the Marilyn Monroe look but PS Erica is also looking amazing she is also just stunning honestly Dorit and Erica those two women have faces to die for they have faces like Greek statues they're gorgeous I don't care what is fake and what is real those are just beautiful beautiful women and I appreciate them in terms of fashion okay um, now so they're talking about various things at dinner and they Garcelle bless her I love her I love that woman um, Garcelle brings up something really interesting was they're talking about um, they're talking about you know kind of everybody's image and everybody's body image and how beautiful everyone looks and um, Sutton makes a comment about how she's really not happy because she's put on some weight and apparently she had a little breakdown in the uh, Dolce & Gabbana store because nothing fit um, which uh, I mean that I you know that's that's um you know that's sad and um, I know oh sad this rich lady can't buy another ten thousand dollar dress but you know she's used to being slimmer and she's recently put on some weight and she's frustrated and uh, she doesn't like what the mirror is telling her so she doesn't want to come out and show what she's trying on to the ladies and she just kind of feels yeah she just feels less than and then here she's with she's got Dorit and Erica at the table <laughs> and Denise Richards who's naturally beautiful um, yeah so I, I you know she's feeling a little um, yeah, she's feeling a little self-conscious, which, okay, she's human. Um, I think it's at this point when Garcelle says, I believe it's during a confessional, but I think it's such a good point because I don't think she says it. She wouldn't say it out loud to Lisa. Yeah, it's definitely during a confessional. By the way, Garcelle looks beautiful during her confessional too. These women all look so much better. I don't know what it is. It's lighting, I don't know. It's just the confessional looks are good. Um, even Teddy, they're all good. Okay, so Garcelle points out that uh, Lisa Rinna's um, dancing TikToks, her many, many dancing TikToks uh, that she's been putting out there of her in skimpy underwear, you know, dancing with her bones showing, she, Lisa Rinna is really scary skinny. Um, I don't think she eats. I hardly ever see her eat, if ever. And um, I think that she's, I think that, I think that she's been under eating for so long that it's not even an eating disorder anymore. It's just her life. She just consumes very few calories. <laughs> so anyway, Garcelle makes the point that these TikToks with her showing off her perfectly bone thin body without an ounce of fat anywhere, I wouldn't necessarily say perfect. Like I said, I think she's too thin, but showing off her, you know, 0% body fat shape. Um, what is that doing to her daughter who has body issues and eating disorders? Would Lisa Rinna even think about what that does to her daughter? And yes, they do actually bring it up. Yes, they do actually bring it up at the table too. It's not just Garcelle in a confessional. Because she says, oh, you know what? I, I encouraged, I don't even want to know her daughter's names. Let's call her Bedelia, whatever. Um, I, I encouraged Bedelia to make, I tell her she should make a TikTok because she looks fabulous and she should own it. And Harry Hamlin said, yes, Bedelia should definitely make a TikTok and show off her beautiful body. And she got millions of likes or whatever, you know. Yeah. Again, your daughter with the body image problem, is that a good thing that the way that you sh teach her to get over her body image problem is that she's in good enough shape that she goes on TikTok and millions of people say, you look good because you're thin. Are you not feeding the monster, you stupid, selfish bitch? 
Yeah, mother of the year. Way to go there. Okay. Um, oh God, then Kyle's got to say, you know, I just, I just got to say it again. I am, um, I just have so much anxiety over, you know, over Brandy and Denise. I've been, I've been crying and it's just, it's been really tough. It's been really tough for me. And, um, I, it, you know, it, it's affected everything. It's affected my stomach. Um, I'm crying for no reason. I'm not sleeping. Shut the F up please oh i'm so sorry this has affected you in such a bad way <sighs> okay remember sutton also had chimed in with the witches of eastwick which is another reason why i'm mad at sutton um even if she is having body issues i'm sorry about that sutton but i'm mad at you she says that she had heard that brandy and denise had had sex from someone else shut up now you're just trying to sit at the cool girls table you know ugh, disgusting okay now um you know we we go through this whole thing again uh teddy's just a bitch and she's not gonna let it go so they still want to hear a little bit more about the sequence of events when brandy came up there blah 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 blah, blah. okay um and then they set upon her like a pack of dogs, like, like sharks, like witches, like everything that they are. And they say that, um, you know, you said that you, uh, Kyle and Teddy are like, but you said that you didn't talk to Brandy before my party, that you didn't talk to her before she saw all of us. Um, remember, you, you specifically told that you didn't talk to her. Okay, well, Denise didn't bring up the conversation, probably because Brandy spent the whole time telling Denise, you know, that she was talking shit about everybody. So again, Denise is leaving things out where it's convenient, and she shouldn't have to be so careful. She shouldn't have any, but everybody on her back like a pack of detectives. But the fact is, yeah, she does mess that point up. She did talk to Brandy before the party. And in that conversation, Brandy mostly told her, Denise, how horrible everyone was and talked garbage about everyone. And then of course, then when she goes back and meets um, at the famous evening when she comes over with uh, Kim Richards and Kim's like, tell him, tell him, <laughs> tell him, tell him what happened. It's terrible, this should never happen to anybody. Tell him, tell him, tell him what happened. Kim poking her on her side, and Brandy then, she, we, we hooked up, but said in such a way like, she raped me, she forced me. Okay, before that whole night, um, Denise and Brandy had spoken, and Brandy had talked a lot of ish about the girls to her, and then of course, lo and behold, a few nights later, when Brandy is talking to Kyle and Teddy, she's telling them all the horrible things that Denise said about everyone. And let me tell you how that happened because I can just tell you how that happened. Don't you think that Erica's just, just a, don't you think that Erica's just such a cold bitch? Don't you think that she's just so hard? There's no warmth there at all. And you know, Denise being like, mm-hmm, uh-huh, like that. I bet you that everything that Brandy said, Denise was probably thinking, why is this bitch calling me? Why do I have to talk to her? And Denise probably thinking, bitch is crazy. So, you know, I guarantee you, Brandy went through a line of things and Brandy was probably the one that said, you know, and, and te who's Teddy? Teddy's nobody. Teddy's a big nobody. You know, she just lived in her father's shadow. She's done nothing. And again, Denise, mm-hmm. And so what do you do? You take that, you turn it around, and technically you're not lying by saying, oh yeah, she said this. She thinks, Erica, she thinks you're a cold bitch. Teddy, she thinks you live in your father's shadow. You see? You see how it works. You live long enough, and you see how these things work. Okay, um, well, the one thing that she, the little bombshell that she dropped is, oh, and by the way, Brandy claims to have sex with everybody, which I totally believe. And 
she claims to have had sex with somebody at this table. See, she's got a grenade of her own. Denise throws her own little grenade in there. Like I said, she doesn't really need to stoop down this low, but just to kind of make everybody think. And uh, Kyle and Lisa immediately think that, that um, you know, they're like, oh, she's lying, she's lying. No, this is ridiculous, she's just covering, she's lying. But uh, let me just say that uh, Lisa Rinna's reaction to this news, to quote Shakespeare, methinks the lady doth protest too much. <laughs> So I don't know, you know, if, if Denise is telling the truth, not that it matters, and ugh, I don't want to think about the ugly blending of two spider bodies that would be Brandy Glanville and Lisa Rinna making love. Ah, ugh. You know, we don't know. We don't know who it was. But anyway, it's just I, Lisa certainly seemed to jump right in there and say, it wasn't me, and P.S., that's not a normal reaction. If I'm sitting at a table and somebody that I've never had sex with or never even thought about having sex with, um, that there is a rumor that's thrown out there that, well, you know, one of you had sex with her. You know what I'm not going to say? I'm not going to say, well, it wasn't me. <laughs> so, Lisa, you're looking guilty. Anyway. Um, so that was fun. That was a fun, messy episode. Um, I hope that you enjoyed it. Um, please like and comment and please move that finger over, press that red button, subscribe. And then when you subscribe, leave your name in the comments so I can thank you personally because you have no idea how much it means to me when you subscribe. I am grateful. And um, yeah, I, I want you to take care of yourself and be good, but not too good. You know, you gotta live.